house bill buckle under my Mitchell and it's old. What the fuck is good, y'all? It's Coffee back with the news, and y'all heard the words of Slim Thug a motherfucker. Big Boss Belt Buckle under my Michelin S. Oh, Gucci shades on my braids when I escalate. Yo, I kind of miss that era, man. You see, we're talking about Michelin S here. Originally, this is kind of being reported erroneously as it was like, yo, Jay-Z bought Michelin S, which, yes, but no, kind of. You know what I'm saying? He's part of some group, Fanatics, um, which I remember that hitting the news. It's like they uh, are investing sports memorabilia and different things of that nature like i feel like uh the group bought or the firm i'm sorry bought some uh like cards like y'all remember like upper, upper deck cards not upper deck specifically but bought like some cards or something like that's so an ownership stake in that uh, a while back and um this group is made up of jay-z meek mill a bunch of other celebrities you feel me i feel like it's the cats who brought bought robert Kraft that um expensive ass whip they got him for his birthday you know but still lit you know what i'm saying still another notch on hove's belt i guess uh so to speak but i missed that era y'all remember like the early 2000s the mitchell and as the throwback jerseys like don't get me wrong um they're still in style people still fuck with them i don't think mitchell and s is uh falling off or anything like that but y'all know how it was back then that's all you seen was throwbacks everywhere and I, personally, I think uh, Fabulous was the king of the throwback. Y'all remember he said uh, throwback so old, they'd be like somebody's grandparents. Damn, or some ish like that, man. Yo, Fabulous was dope, man. Still is, but we don't see him as much uh, these days. But hit the comments, y'all. What, what was like your favorite throwback of all time? You know what I'm saying? Was it the Blue Lakers? Was it the old school Astros? The, the Rams? What? get in the comments uh let me know but this is uh this is live for hope and meek i wonder if they'll have the power to do any kind of special editions or something like that you know what i'm saying they uh bought a 75 percent stake in mitchell and s and uh mitchell and s turned a 70 million dollar profit last year that's a hell of a year Then how about that? That's some funny ish, man. Y'all see the big boss, Ricky Ross. He only recorded a short, brief 15 seconds. So who knows how the rest of this interaction went down. But, uh, you know, he got a package delivery and dude was like, yo, you need IDs. Like, yo, I'm the big boss, Ricky Ross. Like, what's wrong with you? But in all honesty, I don't know why. I mean, it's only a 15 second clip, but I, I kind of get the vibe like that dude don't listen to rap like he may not know who rick ross is as crazy as that may sound to rose himself that someone doesn't know the big boss will name real name william roberts the second is uh the id that he wanted to see a name with when uh he pulled up but um for real i don't know let me know what y'all think but like i said we don't get to see how it ended then y'all this is funny to me right uh 50 cent was the guest artist guest appearance at the super bowl halftime show you know what i'm saying we were only expecting mary j snoop eminem dre and k dot right and then next thing you know we see 50 cent upside down recreating the iconic in the club video you know that he bursted onto the mainstream with back in uh 2002 after being signed by none other than marshall mathers and I've kept saying in my videos, Fifth looked real uncomfortable, like the blood was rush, rushing to his head. You know what I'm saying? My take on it was, hey, when you get older, you can't do ish. You can do when you're younger. Like, you ain't the same. This is, what, 20 years ago now we're talking about. But seems fans have been roasting Fifth, clowning him about his weight, which, like, what the fuck, man? It's not like he's a fat ass. It's not like he put on 100 pounds. I mean, I don't know he's working all the time i guess maybe he ain't hitting the gym like he used to or maybe he's indulging in some uh desserts or some ish he ain't supposed to with his diet i don't know you know what i'm saying 50 cents always been like a pro fitness in good shape type individual but y'all see all the headlines um they're talking about yo you can't body shame 50 cent and uh he actually said that too like yo y'all are trying to body shame me pick on me man I ain't sweating it go go get uh this new sweet merch which 
This G Unit sweatband and, and, and wife beaters are not new. These is the same ones from way back. Y'all remember way back, like how we were talking about throwbacks way back in that era. Um, the G Unit wife beaters, I feel like, came out in like 04, like two years later, or whatever. But I remember a lot of people clowning them, saying they look like girls' spaghetti strap shirts, some ish like that. I don't know. They were different, but. Uh, fifths, I'm um, pushing them back out. Here they are again. Like, tap any comment. Did you fluck with G Unit clothing? I remember a lot of people dissing G Unit clothing. Matter of fact, we were just talking about Rose. Y'all remember when Rose was like, yo, uh, his clothes was so bad they had to give him away. I'm a fly dude. Fifth don't know how to dress. Like, cut it out. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I like the G Unit clothing. Um, the G Unit and Shady Limited always kind of felt similar, like they were made by the same. Maybe not. I think Echo made um, Fifth's, Fifth's clothing, though. Echo and Reebok? I don't know. But Fifth ain't going for it. They're trying to body shame them. Now, how about this one, y'all? We got another debate. Like, we always got to hit it with the streets. You know what I'm saying? For all the uh, gangster, you know, street individuals, the, the just the fans of hip-hop that are nerds. We have these debates all the time, right? Brandon Bills, uh, Danny Lee's brother, who, you know, uh, after the baby embarrassed her, humiliated her on IG Live, he told the baby he needed that fade. It wasn't, you know, he wasn't fucking around. And he tried to seize that opportunity, but we seen the way it all went down. He caught a mean beating in the bowling alley. And apparently now he's suing. There's not a dollar amount attached. What does everyone think, man? Like, um, I always let y'all know I'm not a street dude, so I'm not like I'm not one to knock someone for suing. But aside from street codes here, some people may say in this situation, yo, he approached the baby. He got what he got. Um, he's a sucker for suing. But how do you feel? You know, like, should he say, yo, fuck it. I'm going to sue him. He didn't give me the one I won. He jumped me on some old other shit. And, you know, that's humiliating. Um, dude seems to be dealing with the embarrassment well. But let's keep it a buck. He got humiliated online, just like his sister. He got whipped around by his ponytail, which is still crazy to me that they got him. He got hang time. He left the ground with that one. But on the real, the baby... He didn't want to throw the ones with dude. I mean, he popped off on him, but I think he knew his uh, entourage was going to jump in quick. Uh, as we see every, um, we pointed out in a previous video, like every altercation the baby's got in. It's either shots fired or, um, you know, someone's getting jumped. You know what I mean? Like when this whole, whole situation happened with Brandon Bills that we're talking about right now, it really put some clarity into the R.I.P. Cam Colehart situation. Like, pretty sure uh, Cam Colehart was jumped with the help of the security. But what do y'all think? Is he wrong for suing? Would you sue? Fuck it. He didn't give him the head up. Sue him. Hit his pockets. Let me know what you think. Yeah, I mean, shit, if he wins, it could definitely be a hell of a come up. And what do you think? Will he win? I think he's got a hell of a case of winning, but they might say, yo, you put out this previous video saying you needed to get the fade. The baby could be like, yo, he he approached me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Between us, we know what it was. He he was trying to defend his sister. I see some people saying, yo, he should have minded his... I don't know, man. I th I didn't really think that was a clout chasing move as, as uh, you know, everyone puts it these days. I, I thought he was really trying to hold down his sister. Maybe I'm tripping, but... um. The baby will be able to argue that, that he already had put it out there in the atmosphere, some threats. But I don't know. He could have gave him the ones. And then last up on the rundown, man, um, I'm a little late with this one. This was like five days ago. C-Mac once again returned to No Jumper now as we've been chronicling through our blogs. Um, you know, and like we do with a lot of our favorite content creators we kind of follow the career and break down everything that goes on and um you know as we pointed out with c-mac what was this just a few weeks ago it felt like this could be it for c-mac you know what i mean this this uh i guess we'll call it dirt came out on c-mac it was not looking good um it was really looking like it could be the end of him once again hit the comments let me know if y'all thought that's what how it was going to go down but here we are now and um, his platform is hotter than ever. He's doing shout outs. I just seen a video yesterday. He's playing like uh, someone called him Cupid Mac. He's trying to sit here and fix relationship. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can hit C-Mac for whatever and he'll do a video. You want promo. You want a shout out. You want him to try to holler at your girl so she'll get back with you. 
Um, that's what he was doing yesterday. He's doing it all. And when he was over there on No Jumper, it was bugged out. It was wild. Adam 22 was uh, trying to get C-Mac to, he was trying to push him towards the adult entertainment industry. You know what I mean? As we know, Adam 22 has been a part of that scene for a long time. Ain't that wild if you think about it? He went from um, BMX to hip hop to the porn world. Um, maybe not necessarily in that order. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? And he interviews people from uh, all those different um, genres and communities and whatnot. And, you know, just people with viral videos and big YouTubers like Adam 22, no jumper, really getting getting it in from all aspects. But I guess they had some OnlyFans girl on there who was saying her specialty is the gangbang. Yes, you heard that right. And uh, she was talking about she wanted to get with C-Mac. And Adam was like, yo, do you have some friends that you could fulfill this to her? And he was saying, yeah, yo, I thought he, I, I swear, I thought he was going to say, yeah, about 55 of them. Send her over to 55th Street. Like, real talk, Adam 22 was like lining up the 55th Street gangbang. That's crazy, y'all. And we were just talking about all these different worlds. Ad, uh, uh, Adam 22 is um doing his thing and making money. And with C-Mac, we just said, you know, pointed out how he is uh, really showing his hustler side right now with all the different ways he's monetizing his platform. But then um, someone was saying, and yo, he brought Coach Warren around. He actually brought Coach Warren. As y'all may recall, Milk74 was very uh, suspicious that Coach Warren may not exist. But um, he brought him around. And someone was saying he's the new Debo. And with that being said, the way he's getting money in all these different worlds, it makes you wonder, like, because you know how I always point out Snoop Dogg is massively successful, like way bigger than hip hop. Hip hop is huge and, and Snoop is huge within hip hop, but transcends it in other worlds. You know, like hippies love him from Half Baked. Your grandma knows Snoop Dogg. He's done shit with wrestling. He's done ish with Martha Stewart. People in other countries that don't even know about hip hop know Snoop Dogg. And then they were saying like C-Mac could be the new Debo, R.I.P., you know, Tiny, Debo, Zeus, Lister. I could almost kind of see C-Mac filling that void, playing those roles that uh, Debo used to play, making those appearances. And it really makes you wonder, you know, like C-Mac is, is huge right now. Um, like I said, it looked like it was going to be the end for him. Now he's bigger than ever at 200 K subs and all that. But could you see him becoming bigger than just the internet and all this, like a Debo and, and, you know, growing more and more and becoming an icon like Snoop get in the comments and let me know what y'all think. But, um, you know, aside from all this other stuff, more or less on this appearance on no jumper, he, it seems like all this controversy, you know, that he had already made it past, you know, still with good momentum on his side is like officially, officially behind him. Like C-Mac is shaking and moving something fierce right now, you know, but that's going to conclude the news. Let's talk in the comments. Thank you all for watching. This has been another one with Jay Coffee. New viewers, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell, y'all. Every interaction helps. Um, we drop content every day, music, news, sports and more. And I'm gone, y'all. Peace.